Do you remember what happened when God came to Moses in the burning bush and called Moses to deliver and lead out the people of Israel out of Egypt? Um, if you remember back in Exodus chapter 2, which is, well, really chapter 3, Exodus chapter 2, by then it talks about Moses is born and Moses ends up, you know, growing up and running away from Egypt and then years go by. And in Exodus chapter 3, actually, is when God comes to Moses and appears to Moses in the burning bush and then God is telling Moses, you know, here's what's going on. My people are crying out. I want to deliver them and you're going to be the one to go to my people and bring them out of Egypt. But there, like in verse 11, the first thing, well, the first thing Moses says, he says to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now, the first excuse he makes as to why he can't go, shouldn't go, is, well, who am I? I mean, who is Moses? I, I'm no, nobody special, nobody great. So he makes his first excuse. Well, God says, well, I'm going to be with you. You know, Moses, it's not really about you, Moses. It's about me wanting to bring my people out. I am going to be with you. I am going to bring the people out. But then Moses in verse 13 makes another excuse. Moses says, well, but when I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and then they say to me, well, what is his name? Well, I don't know what I'm going to tell them. I don't know what I'm going to say when they say, well, what is his name who, who of this God who has sent you? And so God answers him, I am who I am. Tell them I am has sent you. God has sent you. And God talks more and talks about how he's going to deliver the people out of Israel. Then in chapter 4, verse 1, Moses makes yet another excuse. And says, well, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to me. And suppose they say, well, the Lord has not appeared to you. And God also gave Moses some signs to do to the people. To help Moses affirm that, yes, indeed, God, Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh, has sent me to lead you out of Egypt. But still, Moses makes another excuse in chapter 4, verse 10. Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. <laughs> you know, Moses says, well, I, I'm not a great speaker. I'm not eloquent. Uh, I'm slow of speech. And the Lord again says, Moses, I am God. I made you. I'm going to be with you. I'll tell you what to say. I'm going to help you. But then finally, Moses still just really out of, I guess, any more excuses he could come up with. Moses finally just says in verse 13, Lord, please just, just send somebody else, whoever you else, you, could, you know, somebody else, let, let them go. And God finally got angry with Moses but yet still helped Moses. He didn't finally say, okay, Moses, whatever, I'm done. I'm going to pick somebody. He says, so that final excuse or that final really plea of send someone else, God says, no, Moses, but I will send someone to help you. Remember, God says, Aaron, your brother, he'll help you. And then we see finally, you know, Moses is out of excuses and Moses finally goes. And we hope we can see the rest play out as God powerfully uses Moses and Aaron to give his word, to perform these miracles, to warn of plagues, and to lead the people of Israel out. But I'm always reminded when, when I go back and I read this and I see how Moses was just full of excuses when it came to doing what the Lord was calling him to do. And I I have to ask myself, and maybe you do too, all of us should ask ourselves, are, are we ever like Moses? When it comes to the will of God for our lives or the work that he has called us to do, do, do we at times make excuses like Moses as to why we supposedly 
can't or shouldn't or maybe later or, well, somebody else will do it. I think we've probably all been guilty, just like Moses. We kind of look at this, we read Exodus 3 and 4, and we kind of laugh at Moses. It makes a you know, good story, a good lesson. We kind of get a chuckle out of it. We kind of shake our heads and say, oh, you know, Moses, he was so full of excuses. And But again, how many of us have been guilty just like Moses? How many of us have made excuses in our lives? Something to think about. Something for all of us to really consider. Am I, am I really living my life the way God wants me to? Or am I making excuses as to why, well, I'm, I'm just not there yet? Or when it comes to the, the work God has called his people, his church to do in, in worship or in, in spreading the gospel, do, do, do we make excuses as to why I can't? And, you know, like Moses, I, I'm not a good speaker or I'm not, I, who am I? I'm, I'm nobody special or I'm not as smart or talented as somebody else. Or we just kind of easily say, well, somebody else will do it. You know, there's always somebody else who will, you know, do this or do that. Instead of being the one saying, I'll do it. Here I am, Lord. Send me. I hope and I pray that we all will really consider this, take it to heart, and that we'll get rid of the excuses. We'll stop making excuses and instead make more of an effort. Be more disciplined, be more determined, more diligent. And I'm speaking to myself. We all need to make sure that we're fully giving our hearts to God and our lives. And don't let the things of this world, just the busyness, and just the, the, the stuff that just can weigh us down, distract us, and keep us just busy. It is so easy to just make excuses. But God hasn't called us to take the easy way, but to do hard things sometimes. Sometimes it just means I got to put forth a little more effort, a little more time. I got to trust God more. Stop putting the focus on ourselves, our abilities, and say, Lord, lead me, teach me, guide me, work in me and through me. Help me, Lord, to be and do what you want me to be and do. And stop making excuses. Let's be encouraged by that. I hope this helps. I hope it will encourage us all to fight against excuses and make more of an effort to serve God in love, in faith, in joy, and to not be guilty of what Moses did. God bless.